So President Biden is trying to keep tensions down between China and Taiwan. China recently flew military jets into Taiwan's air defense zone, sparking concerns over conflict in the region. Haley Ott is in London following this, as well as other stories for us. Haley, good morning. Good morning, Anne-Marie. The military situation between Taiwan and China is the worst it's been in 40 years, according to Taiwan's defense minister. President Biden spoke to Chinese President Xi Jinping on Tuesday and said the two countries had agreed to stick to the current consensus that the future of Taiwan will be determined by peaceful means. But China has sent a record 149 jets into Taiwan's airspace over the past week. And the Taiwanese defense minister said there was a real risk of a military misfire. The democratically run island of Taiwan which is off the coast of mainland China, considers itself a sovereign state, but Beijing views it as a breakaway province. Washington has a one-China diplomatic policy that officially recognizes Beijing rather than Taiwan. Now to the Philippines, where the son of the country's former longtime dictator has announced he'll be running for president. Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is an ally of current president Rodrigo Duterte and has served as senator as a senator for years. His father, Marcos Sr., ruled the Philippines for two decades after he declared martial law and padlocked shut the doors of Congress in 1972. He was known for human rights abuses and extrajudicial killings, but supporters of his son say he was too young at the time of the dictatorship to bear any blame. Marcos Jr. will be running against the former mayor of Manila and the superstar boxer Manny Pacquiao. Next, we go to Russia, where the Iranian foreign minister has arrived for talks to create what he says will be a, quote, big bump in relations between the two nations. Iran says it wants to quickly expand its ties with Russia based on a shared vision of foreign policy. The visit comes as world powers are waiting for Iran to confirm when it will resume nuclear talks aimed at stunting its alleged nuclear weapons program. Both Iran and Russia say Iran will resume those talks soon. Finally, to Australia, where part of the country's controversial asylum program is winding down. Australia currently deports anyone who arrives on its shores by boat to detention centers in other nations, either Papua New Guinea or Nauru. But after eight years, its agreement with Papua New Guinea is coming to an end. During that time, there were reports that detainees, detainees were mistreated, of hunger strikes, and of the murder of an asylum seeker by guards. Thirteen people who were detained in either Papua New Guinea or Nauru died by suicide malnutrition or medical inattention. Anne-Marie, Australia's government insists its wider policy of offshore indefinite detention of migrants and asylum seekers isn't changing and that it's been a successful deterrent and prevented many deaths at sea. Critics, however, say the conditions in these detention centers are so horrible that detainees are being effectively tortured. Mm, Haley Ott, thank you very much.